I said, well, this isn't what we agreed on, so the Senate's going to move forward with a forensic audit. Arizona State Senate President Karen Fan is the initiator of the Maricopa County 2020 election audit. I've gotten death threats, got an envelope with white powder in it. The more questions we ask, the more they keep trying to sidestep. In this exclusive interview, she reveals what media isn't saying about the audit and what the future might hold. If there was something that is that was done inappropriately, um, if it was done criminally, I'm going to turn it over to the attorney general's office. Senator, you've been at the forefront of this audit effort, so it's a great pleasure to have you on to get your direct perspective on where things are at and what you see happening down the track. Regarding the ongoing tensions between yourselves in the Senate and the Maricopa Board of Supervisors, you've recently tweeted, build the case, set the trap, and boom, the Maricopa lies will come back to haunt them. Can you give us your explanation of what you meant by this? Yes, uh, it's been an ongoing battle since we first started this. And, and uh, unfortunately, instead of them working with us, they have done everything in their power to try and stop this audit, or um, I'll use the word sabotage in some case. But it's interesting over the months that this has transpired how the stories have changed as to what they will do, what they won't do, promises made, promises not kept. and as all of this drags on, there is just more and more contradiction that is coming out of this from them. And so that's what the that's what the comment meant is we're just trying to do an audit and audit is what it is. The numbers will come out and whatever they are, then that's what they're going to be. When you say promises made, promises not kept, what's the most compelling example of this, would you say? Well, when this all first started right after the very beginning, the first week, uh, at the end of the, the election week, I actually contacted all five of the supervisors and, and said, you know what, there's a lot of chatter out there, emails, Twitter, blogs, you know, talking about how there's problems with this election. And this is not the first time they had problems um, with the 2018 election as well. The Board of Supervisors even came to me and said, we're going to hire somebody because to watch over the recorder because there were so many problems. And I said, look, we need to get ahead of this. And they said, Karen, you bet. We're 100 percent behind this with you and um, we'll be glad to do it, that we can do a much bigger count in the audit rather than the minimum. And then there were some lawsuits filed by outside people. Then they said, oh, we cannot do this. Uh, be, while the lawsuits are going on because we don't want to be charged with tampering with evidence. I said, I get it. About a month later, those lawsuits were all dismissed. And then I reached back out to them again. And they said, oh, well, no, we can't do any more of an audit because we can only do what the legislature authorizes us to do. And I said, well, you actually do have the power. But if you do, if you think you don't, then we'll give you that. So we set up a judicial committee hearing on a Monday morning and I said, Supervisor Hickman, I said, please be aware at the end of that hearing, the uh, judicial chair is gonna have two subpoenas drafted for discussion and possible approval by the committee to issue subpoenas for doing this, which will give you the authority. And this was all talked about, discussed, choreographed the week before. Supervisor Hickman knew full well that's what it was. I even said, if you don't want to be uh, on here when this happens, then feel free to sign off. And he said, that's great. Well, they issued the subpoenas, giving them the authority to do this. And the next morning, he goes before the media and says, I felt like I was slapped in the face. I had no time, no idea this was coming. Well, there was lie number one.